Uh, because we're very lucky actually to have uh, an addition to the program. Uh, we've got Professor Hal Abelson from MIT who wanted to offer some thoughts and reactions to our last session. We're going to give Hal uh, a brief chance to share some ideas before we move to the panel that we're having before lunch, which is a practical introduction uh, to some of the problems with law and regulation within this space. Uh, but I'm thrilled uh, that we're able to have uh, one of MIT's most celebrated faculty, uh, a, a, a real uh, great figure within the field of computer science and computer engineering, Hal Abelson. So last night, Star sent me the closing paragraphs of her, her beautiful remarks that we heard this morning. Um, and then somehow my brain decided that that was the theme at which it would, at which it would uh, wrestle about as it kept me awake around 3 in the morning. Uh, didn't come to any conclusions. I showed, I showed Star's, Star's uh, message to my wife this morning, and she said, you're going to get into trouble. And as usual, she was right. I, I was going, I was going to uh, not say anything this morning and just sit and free associate in a fugal state until Star kind of mentioned the story about Dean Wadley and the batteries, which are a kind of emblematic thing that we share about about MIT so long ago, in fact, that I think most of MIT students don't even know it, and probably almost none of the administration knows it, about the MIT administration putting it in the position of saying, well, hey, we're hackers too, and Star saying, well, you don't see that anymore. Uh, and then Jeremy got up and talked about New Jersey, and what my deranged mind remembered is that there's a member of MIT's Office of General Counsel, who's also a fellow at the Berkman Center, who's written a marvelous, marvelous book called The Witch of the New Jersey Turnpike, which is about a woman who's about 20 years old who lives on the New Jersey Turnpike and sleeps and eats in the, in the rest stops and evades a special division of the New Jersey State Police. What she does is she does performance art, which consists of jumping out in the middle of the turnpike at random times and creating massive traffic jams. And in this, she is aided by uh, a group of three people who call themselves the engineers, who consist not of MIT students, but in fact people that these days we would call members of the extended MIT community who hang around and, of course, do tremendously valuable things, as Aaron did. And sometimes I think that one of, my, one, one of the things that gives me faith in MIT is that there can be somebody who's deranged enough to think that up who works in our Office of General Counsel. So the witch of the New Jersey Turnpike, the thing we all have to understand is that Starr was persecuted for being a witch. And I mean that really seriously. Notice even the words of the law. She had manufactured an infernal device. Right? We are talking about witchcraft. We are talking about doing infernal things. And even if it turns out that she didn't actually do something terribly illegal. She at least did something that was reckless. Remember, the MIT administration actually publicly said that her acts were reckless. So we have to be careful as witches. Not only do we not conjure the devil with our infernal devices, but that we don't offend the sensitivities of people who might be upset like this, like, uh, like people in the New Jersey uh, prosecutor's office who might be protecting the citizens of New Jersey from corrupting their computers into doing infernal things with those cycles. One of the things that we could do is actually think about how to turn that around. I mean, uh, 
you know, maybe what we ought to do is start advocating that hacking is a religion. <laughs> right? Or say, you know, being... Right, we, right we, we can expand, right? We can, we can carry around our, our little circuit boards with lights and maybe you also extend to e-meters or something. But we, right, we could say this is a religion or, uh, or perhaps, you know, we could point out to people that being reckless and upsetting the sensitivities of, say, uh, people in schools who are not used to seeing alarm clocks without, without their cases and just the circuit boards. Maybe that's like being reckless in terms of a, uh, oh, a mixed race company, a mixed race couple trying to check into a motel in some, some area where it's reckless because it would upset people even though it not, even though it in itself is not wrong. We have to understand that we're all happy and friendly here, but there are real fights going on. One of the, Joey's not here, but kind of the first thing that happened to me this morning is I saw Joey, who just talked, as he did, about how he was at the White House talking, you know, talking with Megan Smith and Alex McGillivray and people about what the White House could do. And I wanted to say, well, you know, one of the things the White House could do is get your trained representatives to stop strong-arming the rest of the world into making section, make, making 1201 even worse than it is. One of the things that the White House could do is when Corey and Jonathan talk about how crazy it is didn't you use the word crazy? That you can't actually examine the code in cars. That when the EFF asks for an exemption to do exactly that kind of examination in the name of public safety, maybe one of the things you can do, Mr. President, is get your Department of Transportation and your EPA to stop opposing that kind of, that kind of exemption. So, we need to understand that we're having a great conversation here about how good we all feel, but there's real politics going on and real complicated stuff, and the question is, what can we do about that? Well, there are a couple of hints, and we have the beginning of examples of doing that. We have Herdict that Jonathan and fellows created. Which, you know, which is about thinking about, thinking about uh, blocking in various countries. We have Wendy, who did this beautiful example of chilling effects, which makes the people who are threatened by those letters feel not alone. And so one of the things I would hope we can think about over the next day is what could we do, the people here, to make the people who are threatened by this stuff feel not alone. Right? Maybe the Media Lab should publish an archive of the code that's gotten by breaking into all of these Internet of Things devices. And we just have that, have that as a public thing. And maybe we get, we get our, friends in, our, our friends in the Berkman Center to figure out how we can do that without taking an incredible risk. So there are lots of things we can do. The assembled group in here is just an enormously powerful group. And we have to remember that. And I think the key in doing something as we talk over the next two days is to say, how do we do things to make the witches feel not alone? Thank you so much, Hal.